when is good not good enough? We're gonna talk about that today on Unity Motorsports Garage. So today I'm over here at my good buddy David Vizard's house and we were having a discussion about engine machine work. Yeah, you know, and I thought it would be a really good topic to talk about in a video since I just did Project Mixed Up Balls and talk about the things that could potentially go wrong or right with your combination. Now this video is gonna be mainly catered towards the novice engine builder uh, someone who's new to the game, so hopefully this will help you avoid some of the pitfalls that, that are out there when it comes to building engines. Um, machine work is something not to take for granted, okay? It starts by finding a good, reputable machine shop to start with. Someone that you feel totally confident in their work and knowing that the work is going to be done properly and knowing that everything's going to be done in a timely manner. For me, in my, my engine building, I always rely on Eric Kester at m and &E Engines up in uh, Shelby, North Carolina. He does a super good job, and if you find someone that you know and trust, hang on to them with your dear life, because that could mean the difference of good running engine being an exceptional running engine. So let's talk about machine work. The first thing I wanna talk about is stack tolerances. What is stack tolerances? Basically, everything inside of an engine has a measuring tolerance, okay? From your journal diameters, bearing clearances, so on and so forth. There's actually a measurement. So when I say stack tolerances, what do I actually mean? Well, let's say that you buy a new set of connecting rods, okay? And let's say you have a used crank that you're gonna be running. Well, the crankshaft could be on the high side of the tolerance, and then the connecting rod could be on the small side of the tolerance. And so when you put it together, your bearing clearance is tighter than you would actually like meaning that you would have to take steps at that point to get the necessary clearance that you're looking for. Stack tolerances add up throughout the engine. It's not just pertaining to bearing clearances. One of the things that I noticed that people really neglect when building a high performance engine is actually having the decks cut on the block. Now let me tell you this, the machine work for your engine build is the cornerstone of engine building, okay? May you have probably heard it said a million times, it's been built, balanced, and blueprinted, right? What does blueprinting really mean? That means that you're taking that block and the cylinder heads and everything in between, and you're putting it to an exact dimension, okay? And the reason why you're doing that is so that you get maximum performance when it becomes race day. Um, for my experience, whenever I had Project Mixed Up Boss, I showed a clip in my last video where I was actually checking the deck height of the block in this very room over here at David's house, and that you have to remember, this was an assembled short block, okay? Came straight from Ford Racing. You would think that it would be ready to go. Well, the decks were perfectly straight, but they were out of square. When you check the deck height on the number one cylinder, you get one value, and I'll, I'll insert all of this into the video as I'm talking, but in, as you go further down the line of bank of cylinders, the measurement changed. So what does that do? Well, first of all, it gives you uneven compression. That's one thing. Another thing is it can actually cause issues with your intake alignment, uh, port alignment, and it can cause valve train geometry issues. So it's just something to think about. 
most people when they're building their first engine they're just concerned that the deck is perfectly flat this is a small block chevy that dv is building but when you look at this this can be off two ways it can be off front to back or it can be off side to side and the, the key to getting this right is having it checked off of the main saddles meaning when they the machine shop puts it in their fixture they're going to take an arbor and they're going to run it through the mains and then they're going to check the deck height up here and make sure that it's perfectly square um, one thing talking about production engines it is not uncommon to have different deck heights between banks and what I mean by that is even on my 393 uh, the original plan was to make around 450 horsepower so even though the decks were straight I had one set of pistons that were in the hole nearly 35 thousandths and then the other side was in the hole only about eight thousandths so what I did, I took the cheap route. It's something that you can do as long as everything is square. And that's use a different thickness head gasket to compensate for the two different deck heights that you come up with. So there's multiple things that you need to be looking for when doing this. You need to have a deck bridge. I'll insert a picture of that so that you can see uh, basically, when it comes to uh, assembling engines and you're really wanting something to perform, you will put it together two, maybe three times. You'll put it together to mock up these clearances because you can't really get a good idea. Yes, you can just send this block to the machine shop and tell them I want it decked to a certain speci uh, specification for a Windsor 9.50 or you can get it to where they're both even. But the problem becomes when you put your rod and piston combo in there, you really don't know how far the piston's in the hole or if it may come out of the hole. So the reason why you do the mock-up is so that you can actually get a good measurement of all of your pistons in the holes and know what you, what you need to tell the machine shop. That, that kind of stuff is priceless. Same thing with setting up valve train geometry and all of that. You will mock it up a couple different times to get everything perfect before you actually put it together for good. I have seen good engines run exceptional with good machine work, and I've seen what should have been an exceptional engine perform like a pig because the machine work wasn't up to snuff. So just remember that. You get what you pay for with machine work. Machine work is something that needs to be done and done right. No shortcomings. Um, you can actually take like a junkyard engine, go through it, blueprint it, and probably see upwards of a 20 horsepower gain just by having the correct tolerances in that engine. So where does it stop? you just bought a brand new set of aftermarket aluminum heads my suggestion is actually pour the combustion chambers to make sure that they're the same between the two heads because once again personal experience coming into play i've ran into situations where a head is supposed to be a certain cc you may have one of them that was but in my case both of them were completely out to lunch and they weren't the same. So I had to take cylinder heads to the machine shop, have them decked to get the actual CC as what's per on the box so that I knew that my compression would be actually what I wanted it to be. So when you talk about compression ratios, all of these things come into play. You've got to make sure you account for crevice volume um, making sure that you have the right head gasket bore for the cylinder that you're using. Just all of the little small things that add up to be big things in the bigger picture. So I hope you get something out of this. And until next time, this is Andy from Unity Motorsports Garage. I'll catch you later.